Hi everybody, happy Friday. On this beautiful sunny afternoon in uh, Ontario anyway, near kind of between Montreal and Ottawa. So if you feel like nothing is working, you're frustrated with uh, what can sometimes feel like progress at a snail's pace, you feel like you're not getting results, or that just these strategies are taking so so long, or or maybe just that your child is just managing and not, you know, really moving forward. And you're kind of worried or concerned of like, where is this going to take me in two years or three years or five years or even 10, 20 years? What is this going to look like? It really could just boil down to the wrong action at the wrong time. So I've talked quite a bit about, um, you know, amazing uh, interventions like OG tutoring for reading or, different types of other phonics instruction and so forth, or different writing programs for kids who have dysgraphia and uh, even just different behavioral kind of strategies or parenting techniques for ADHD or ODD. And all of those are not bad. They are fantastic. Even IEPs, even medication in certain instances. Um, you know, I'm a firm believer we're over medicating. And I think that a lot of us are on the same page with that, but and it's not that all of these things that I've mentioned are wrong, particularly when it comes to learning difficulties and remedial reading and so forth, but it has to be the right action at the right time. And what's going on right now is a lot of the time we are working on skills, which are like way at the top of the learning pyramid, when our child's, our children's brains aren't even properly developed or built. So we need to work on sensory motor function, vestibular function, improving visual and auditory processing, um, you know, vestibular function. There's so many things we need to work on in order for those skills to become, to, to be strong or for them to develop, um, you know, well, and kids to be able to read fluently, to be able to calculate well, to be able to learn and all of the stuff that we want them to be able to do to be successful in school and in life, right? Because this isn't just about school and, and passing tests and all of that type of stuff. And so if you are ready to see your child be a happier kid, a more confident kid, every single mom I talk to, like literally, I don't think there's been a single mom I haven't talked to um, in all of the years I've been doing this, who's one of their number one concerns is the erosion to their child's confidence that the reading or learning or behavioral difficulties or the anxiety, whatever it is, is having. That's their biggest concern because we all know that that is what is going to hold our child back from, that will limit themselves. Even if those limitations aren't real, if their confidence is low, then they will limit themselves. So if you're ready to, to move beyond managing, beyond compensation approaches and move into corrective approaches and find a way that is actually simpler instead of doing something for years to just fix the root cause um, and, and, and basically stop putting all of your time, energy, money, resources. And like, you know, I just work with moms, even like I call them researchers because they just spend hours and hours and hours a week online looking for different solutions, how they can help their child. And what we really need are corrective approaches, not compensations that address the root cause and that ultimately move kids beyond just managing. Um, and so what I'm gonna be talking about tomorrow um, during my live training, I, I'm having that at 10 a.m. Eastern. Uh, please join, I will put the link uh, to join that in the comments below. But um, what I'm gonna be talking about is all of this, how ex in beautifully, amazingly plastic the brain is, how much it can change, how we can shift reading activity um, in a dyslexic child from the right side of the brain where dyslexics read from to the left side of the brain, how um, there's hemispheric imbalance with kids who are ADHD. Typically it's that they have what's called a left brain overdevelopment and a right brain, like the right brain is underactive and how we can shift that, how there are certain weak connections or uh, primitive reflexes, so what I call baby brain, that is creating a block for them to access those higher levels. And all of that can be changed with different interventions and therapies and so forth. And um, I'm gonna kind of walk you through that process, the process that I do with my clients uh, in my six month program, the three step process, what needs to be done and so forth. I'm kind of 
uh, if you will, giving away the structure of that. And, and, and then getting into not just the connections part and the brain, of course, the brain is plastic and all that, but then also going deeper into the biochemical factors like gut health, how uh, so many of our neurotransmitters that help us with fo focus and um, being calm and, and memory and all of that type of stuff is manufactured by the gut bacteria and how so many of our kids have compromised gut bacteria. This goes so much further than just autism and affects kids with dyslexia, learning disabilities, and all that type of stuff. And addressing, you know, nutritional deficiencies because we need certain nutrients to help manufacture those neurotransmitters, to help balance brain chemistry, to help balance blood sugar, which will cause mood uh, issues and so forth. And of course, addressing things like toxicity or irritants. So whether it's like toxic things like heavy metals, like mercury, or whether it's tox a trigger or an irritant where it's like a food sensitivity just for your child, right? It's not unhealthy. It's not necessarily a bad food, but maybe it's a sensitivity for your child. So I am going to be talking about all that. And ultimately what I'm going to be talking about, what I am so passionate about is why so many of our kids are struggling today. Why there is such an increase in ADHD, autism, dyslexia, learning disability, Tourette's, all of these different disorders, sensory processing, ODD, and no, it is not better diagnosis. I am going to be getting into that and showing you the science behind why better diagnosis is um, something where, you know, that's kind of floating around, but it's so much deeper than that. And there's a lot of science to, to kind of back that up. And I will just give you a tidbit. Um, just keep in mind that when we were kids, I know when I was kids, when I was a child, we could go to school and eat a peanut butter sandwich and nobody batted an eyelash. And now we can't do that. Kids are sick. Their biochemistry is disrupted on a very biochemical le level. They have disrupted immune systems, imbalanced gut bacteria. Their biochemistry is off. And if we want to address that, we need to start healing the body on a biochemical level and we need to support the brain so that it can make stronger connections so that it can the brain can have a better brain organization and that's the basis of my talk my program the work that i do so um if you want to sign up the link will be in the comments below and uh basically i'll be talking about the three secrets if you will that i apply in my program that worked for my daughter works for so many of my clients uh, you'll hear amazing case studies and stories of kids who um you know were so limited they really were told there was no hope this is genetic or this is just how they are and have kind of defeated all uh, supposed limitations. So I really hope you join me nine or 10 a.m. Eastern tomorrow morning. Uh, do sign up and thanks for watching. Happy Friday.